This section is going to demonstrate how our lab handles and processes body fluids for cytological examination. Our fluids are basically divided into two types, body cavity fluid and non-body cavity fluid. The slide making process is the same for both. The difference is that body cavity fluids get a nucleated cell count, a red cell count, and a protein by refractometry. Nucleated cell count could be done on either the bioanalytic leukotic, or if you have an automated instrument, it could be provided off of there as well. Red counts, you wouldn't want to attempt a manual count. After a fluid sample has been collected, it's very important to make your smears as soon as possible to prevent the cells from disintegrating over time. I will demonstrate making of a direct, a line, and a swabbed smear from a sample that has some particulate matter in it. Whether or not it has particulate matter, you want to treat them all the same. And after that, I will show how to make a concentrated sample by a cytospin methodology and also explain how you can do it in your own clinic without the use of a cytospin. The best way to capture particulate matter, if it's mucus, a clot, piece of fibrin, any and all of those can contain cells, which can be very important for diagnosis. Take a, a applicator Q-tip and just swish it around in the fluid, trying to capture material as best you can. Take it onto a slide and above the frosted edge, just gently smear it out and you'll be able to see your material on there. So that's your swabbed sample. Your direct and your line smears can be done using a PCV tube, packed cell volume tube. Fill your tube about three quarters full and you'll make a medium sized drop again above your frosted edge. And these are very runny samples, so it's a bit tougher to make a good smear than it does a blood smear. You don't need to worry about quality really. More of the um, goal is to get cells on the slide. So the direct smear, hold your spreading slide very vertically in order to keep all of the material on the slide. Just bring it into the drop and push it straight out. And that will be your direct smear. And then you will make a line preparation. So this is demonstrating the line preparation which can be used to concentrate cells. And you start out like a blood smear and you just lift it straight up after going about halfway down your slide. And then you will see that you have a line. It's really handy if you just indicate on the back with either a marker or a grease pencil where your line is because sometimes in non-cellular fluids it's quite an effort to find that line. If you're sending your slides to a reference lab, it's important that they be protected from environmental things like flies, water, dirt, and trauma. So um, you can get plastic uh, slide protectors. We have them um, available if you need some. Um, and either one works. This one can hold up to four or five slides. This one just holds uh, two. But um, that said, you still need to wrap them in bubble wrap or um, something like that just to protect them from breakage. And it's also important to um, separate any slides uh, from formalin containing vessels, otherwise the cell quality is terrible and you won't get a result on your cytology submission. Labeling your slides is important, obviously. So you want to identify who your patient is so say for example this was daisy dot you want to label your slide very close to the bottom of the frosted edge and the reason for that is you just don't want it um, 
being interfered with by the stain. Now bearing in mind that um, most clinics are not going to have a cytospin, but you still might want to view a uh, concentrated sample. What you can do is just treat your fluid like a urine. So you could pour off um, an aliquot, spin it down in your regular centrifuge, take off the supernatant, and make a smear of the sediment with a pipette. And all you need to do is indicate on that slide that it's a concentrated preparation, again, if you are sending it to a reference lab. Another part of our fluid assessment is that of color and turbidity. Here we have a nice variation as to what we often see. It's kind of pretty uh, open as to how you describe it, but this would be slightly red, slightly cloudy. This moderately red, moderately cloudy. This would be bright yellow and clear. This one appears to be opaque or turbid and lipemic. We do get that. And this one appears to be green and cloudy, and that is potentially a bile sample. But they run the gamut. If you have joint fluids, we also describe whether they are viscous or not. And we also describe whether there is any fibrin, clots, um, flocculent material present. And there are times when the sample is too viscous to make those slides with a PCV tube that I demonstrated. Um, in that case, you might just have to take a syringe or whatever you have that will allow you to get any material onto a slide. And then you can take your swab and swab it around to separate the cell. If you have a body cavity fluid and you want to determine whether you are dealing with an exudate, a transidate, or a modified transidate, one of the steps that you'll want to do is a protein by refractometer. So you'll spin your sample down in your micromaticrit centrifuge and break it anywhere along the tube that you're going to have enough sample to flood your platen with. So, flood your refractometer. You want to make sure you have enough sample to make sure you have a large dark area, otherwise you won't be able to read your results. Sometimes you might need to use two tubes of plasma or plasma or fluid, whatever the case may be. So, once you have enough sample, which would be indicated by a pretty large dark spot on your platen. You bring the instrument up to your eye, and each refractometer is different, but this one has a scale that says SP for serum protein, and it says grams per 100 mil. So you should have a very straight, clear line, uh, a dark one and a light one, and the interface is where you read your result. The other thing about fluids that is important upon submission is to submit them in EDTA uh, tubes. You can use a red top one for culture, but EDTA provides um, the opportunity for your sample to not clot if there is blood present. As you can see, these are not purple top tubes, but that is our wish. To make a concentrated sample, which we do on all fluids that we get in the lab, we have what's called a cytospin centrifuge. It's a combination apparatus of a slide, a filter paper on which there are two sides, a more absorbent slide and a flat side. The more absorbent side goes up. The cup goes on top of that and then fits into a clip. And you want to ensure that all of your holes line up. You'll load your um, cytospin apparatus with approximately 200 microliters of sample. If it is extremely cloudy, you will want to dilute it with some saline until you can barely see through it. Otherwise, the button is too thick for our pathologist to read the cell. So I'm going to go over to the cytospin. 
Once the cup is loaded with sample, we place it into the rotor of the cytospin and then place the lid on it so that your sample and clips don't fly all over the place. Put the uh, lid down. And we have it set to spin at a very low speed. It's only at 500 RPMs uh, for 10 minutes, whereas a um, micromaticrit centrifuge spins at 13,300 RPM. So you can see that this is a much um, slower rotation to preserve the integrity of the cells. So after 10 minutes, um, then the cytospin is complete. And then we can show what it looks like after. So once the um, time is complete, we remove the apparatus from the centrifuge and we hold it at an angle because we don't want to remove the sample from the slide. So we will disassemble the cup assembly gently to, so as not to disturb the um, button of cells on that's left on the slide. So gently separate the filter paper and you will see that the fluid is absorbed onto the filter paper and you are left with a button of cells on the slide which will then be stained with right Gein's stain. Once your slide has been removed from the centrifuge and for any of the slides that you have made you want to stain them and if you are sending to a reference lab um, please send some unstained slides because they like to look at their own stain, but feel free to stain some for your own use as well. So the procedure is to dip your slide five times per solution for one second per dip. And this may be altered depending on the thickness of your um, cytology preparation. For example, if you have lymph nodes or bone marrows or sometimes even some very thick exudates, it's hard for the stain to penetrate, so you might have to hold it in the pink or the purple stain a little bit longer. And it's hard to do it incorrectly, so you can't really mess it up. So once you've finished with the purple stain, you can just uh, transfer it to either distilled water or tap water, it doesn't matter, and just swirl it around. And you may have to change your water until it uh, is clear coming off. And if you have trouble remembering the order that your stain should go in on your bench, it goes from lightest to darkest. To speed up drying, you can wipe off the back and just dab the bottom, and then you can just lean it against a surface to air dry. And after that, it's available to look at.